Good day everyone, my name is Maria Kongelska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. And today is more Poland Daily Philosophy because we are talking about Janukasiewicz and Paul Warsaw Lviv Logic School. With me in the studio is Zemavit Gavin, PhD candidate at Warsaw University. And Zemavit, you have at least a lot to do with analytical philosophy. Yes. Uh, and that's why you can explain to us a little bit more of those details which of well, logical thinking and especially because well, let's say openly philosophers diverge to those who have want to have nothing to do with analytical philosophy and those which are basically all deep in those and an analyzing a sentence after a sentence usually just half of the semester one sentence. Well, you could put it that way, <laughs> although it's an exaggeration. Maybe, okay, and there is a very small part of a part of like a spot of uh, philosophers, uh, of, uh, of I mean, social and political philosophers as me, who try to just find themselves in the middle <laughs> between analytic and um, phenomenology or something. Well, I think I'm in the middle uh, as well. As well, as well. And there are also logicians those who are deep into logic for logic itself. Yes, for logic itself, just for sport. Sometimes. Oh, <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> but it's a bit true. Okay, anyway, back to Jan Łukasiewicz, yes. who definitely was one of the of like founding father uh, of Polish uh, logical school. And what is interested, interesting, usually we talk, when we talk about logic, we talk about two-valued yes. logic. So explain us a little bit more what two-valued logic is. Well, so basically two-valued logic means that there are two uh, values. So when I say, when I utter a sentence, there are two caps on this table. This sentence is either true or false. Well, in this case, it is true. So let's take another sentence. There's an elephant in the studio. Well, I hope there isn't. I think there isn't. I haven't seen one. So this sentence is, again, either true or false. And in this case, it is false because there is no uh, elephants in the studio. Uh, but, uh, and there is this, well, principle, pr principle of bivalence, which means that every statement, every statement is either true or false. So uh, in the traditional two-valued logic, uh, this principle is the core principle. So there are no other values. And Lukashevich rejected this view. He rejected the principle of bivalence. And he, and he worked out, well, some people say that he invented, some people say that he discovered, and it's, an, it's a philosophical uh, issue. I would if say we are he inventing discovered. <laughs> or discovering. Yes, uh, elements of the world. Yes, yes, is logic an element of the world? And, in, and if it is, in what way, and so on. But, we are not talking about metaphysics now, uh, so let's say that he invented slash discovered, uh, well, multi-valued uh, logic. And he started with the idea that there are certain sentences which, uh, well, which have, uh, which, which, da which do not have determined truth value, so that they, so that they are uh, neither true nor false. And uh, as an example uh, of such a sentence, it will rain tomorrow. Yes, so all the sentences about the future, yes. which we cannot say if they are true or false. Yes, and there's, uh, well, logical determinism. Let's say that uh, we are under uh, an uh, attack and, and we are being, uh, somebody is bombing us. And you can hide in your basement. But if you're a, log a, logical, de a logical determinist, the, the determinist, you can say, well, if I die tomorrow because of, of the bombing, why should I go to the basement? But if I don't die, again, why should I go to the basement? Because this sentence is fixed. It's either true that I will die or it's not. So if it's not true that I will die, why the heck should I go to the basement? Well, yeah. And if the, and, yeah. So, of course, uh, yeah, and we know it's, uh, it's absurd to think that way. And so Bukashevich, uh was uh, said that there's a third 
value for such sentences. And sometimes he used uh, number two for this value, uh, sometimes, and it's usually uh, explained that way, uh, it's one second. One second, yes. One second. So it's not fixed. It's not yet fixed. And this also shows a little bit that he, he seen in natural language that there is more than we than the logical notation shows us, that the natural language is, is, of is brighter, richer, and there are sentences when you cannot. Yes, so he was one of the first logicians who were trying to uh, explain uh, in logical terms um, um, value of possibility. Of, so whether something it's not true, it's not false, it's possible. Yes, because it's possible that it will rain tomorrow. Yes. But we don't know it, it's not fixed. Yes. And of course, with, with logic, who wants to basically uh, describe the whole world and be kind of a tool to, uh, to try to also show every argument, uh, it's, it's, it is a problem and it's, it's kind of a, a difficulty when you yes. show the sentences. And that's why we have so many logic, uh, uh, logics now. And I, I think I w it also uh, kind of int might be interesting for our viewers to mention that there are sentences in logic which will be always true. Like tautologies. Like tautologies, which are the most beautiful. I remember on my first year when uh, one of our professors, Omewa, was just giving a lecture and telling the sentence, for example, when I say to my wife that I, we are vacuuming or not vacuuming, the sentence is always true. <laughs> it is. Yes. So, it's, or it's it's raining or it's not raining. The whole sentence is always true. Yes. Uh, which is, of course, very funny and beautiful, especially when they uh, uh, when they explain this to you. Uh, but in just in fact that they are tautologies, uh, so such kind of statement which 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 will be always true whenever we say it. Uh, it, it's, it's important and it's also just show us uh, or the spot of light that the, uh, that the element which uh, binds the sentence is important. So either it's and or or, uh, yes. it's, a, it's, a key, it's a key to understand if the sentence is the whole the tautology or not. Uh, which of course is, uh, is fasc opens a fascinating door to the to the the world of logic. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Where some people are stuck forever. I mean, this is the core of logic. So we are trying to uh, figure out how sentences work with uh, such phrases as "if this, then that," or "this and that," or "this or that." So uh, implications. Um, Mm, uh, conjunctions, uh, alternatives, Alternative disjunctions, uh, and so on. And it also uh, already pops up the question that what kind of reference language has the real world? Uh, in a, and in this way, logic leads us more to, met to uh, metaphysics because we're asking the question how language refers and, and shows uh, the structure of the world. So actually, Wukasiewicz thought uh, sometimes, well, he had two different views. Um, I mean, his views just changed. Uh, so uh, at times he thought that there is some ontological structure behind it. And he said uh, um, one time that uh, there is just one correct logic. It's not like that we can have different logics uh, and use it, uh, well, according to our wishes or whims, uh, but there's one correct logic. But, uh, but uh, at another time, uh, he believed that uh, logic should be cle cleared from ontology, cleared from metaphysical uh, assumptions. Fair. So, well, yeah. He also differs in this. To, to our viewers of Poland Daily, maybe you would like to think what kind of logical status or value ha have sentences about the future? Are they true, are they false, or are they somewhere in between? As Wukasiewicz thought. It's a wonderful, huge world, a garden of logic, which you yourself can discover. And I hope we provided an encouragement for this. Thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.